Hey YouTube, Winstreak here. Today we will be talking about bosses and what makes a good boss in that fine line between a challenging or an overcomplicated boss fight. It is important to give the player some direction on how the boss fight should be done. Zelda games give a good example of this. They'll introduce one or two new items between boss fights and you can generally assume something with those two items is going to be used to help defeat the boss. Oh man, you're way up there out of reach. If only I had a slingshot. Oh well. Oh wait, I totally do. Pow, 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 pow. The boss we built today, we took a little more straightforward approach. I only built the boss, not the full game. So we just start out with two power buttons. And then since nothing else on the stage does anything, touching the boss hurts you, you can't leave the stage. You should pretty quickly realize something has to be done with the power buttons. So once you grab those two power buttons, it's going to unlock a third one in a more difficult spot, which is right underneath the boss. Grabbing that unlocks your attack. Uh, shooting your attack can damage the boss and it will also reset the power buttons allowing you to pick up another attack. Additionally you could also use things like visual clues in your game, lighting or different sounds as you get closer to where you need to be. As long as you have something in order to lead your players in the right direction. Now bosses are awesome because boss fights allow us to do so much. People expect a challenge and something different from the norm. And one of my favorite mechanics that I see all the time in boss fights is varying forms. So that's the approach I took today. This is a change in a boss's behavior, usually an increase in difficulty as you get closer to defeating the boss. Adding these effects gives the players a heads up that they're hurting the boss as well as a reason to scoot forward in their seats and give 100% for the next part. Our boss today has three such mechanisms. So our boss takes damage each time it's shot and each time it takes damage it gets a little stat boost and since our boss doesn't really have attack numbers or HP, defense, all that fun stuff the stats come in the form of its gravity and max fall speed so our boss is jumping up and down and the faster it lands the more likely it is to hit you when you're trying to get that third power button so every hit will proc that mechanic making it slightly harder for our player our second mechanic, at half-life, our boss starts to disrupt the ground when he lands. He sends out a shockwave and essentially the ground just pops up and moves out from where the boss landed and if it hits the player, it'll knock him off the ground and damage him. The third mechanic is at 25% life remaining and our boss shoots out three rocks. He'll randomly throw two in one direction and one in the other one and essentially we are just trying to make it so if the player slips up even the slightest bit they're going to be taking some damage so hopefully they got to this point with a little bit of extra life. Additionally I mentioned that changing mechanics shows we're hurting the boss. We also want to do something visually to show we're hurting the boss. And that can be as simple as a slight color change or adding scuff effects on the boss to show that it's been beat up a little bit. This time around I added blood splatter so as you hit him he squirts out a little bit of blood and the more damage he's taken so far the total amount of blood goes up. The last thing that I want to bring up for bosses is probably my favorite thing about them and it's just that they are these enormous monsters sometimes. Now if you're a great animator or artist this is a great time to shine but if you're not and you're like me and you're drawing in pixels or your main character and your bad guys are squares it's fine you can still show it off. Uh, I have a few last tricks for us and they shouldn't require too much skill in that art department. My boss's size is nine times the size of my hero and it didn't take any graphics to show that he is just ginormous. Doing the math here, we can fit 81 of my heroes inside of the boss. Even if you're making a platformer and your hero is larger than mine, you can take a boss fight to zoom out your screen, still leaving a large amount of room for that boss. And since it's zoomed out, it gives that player the extra sense that they are just a small being in this world that you created for them. Additionally, if you don't like the idea of zooming it out, you can always create a boss that is only a portion of the screen, maybe only their head or part of their body broke through and you can't see all of them because they're just so massive. Looking at the boss that I created, Special Mechanics, these are both related to emphasize the size that he is. As he grows stronger, 
jumps higher and lands harder, he actually breaks the ground he's landing on, creating those disruptions and shooting up rocks and everything. And you can see ideas like this back in Mario Bros. 3, the final boss fighting Bowser. Spoiler, you make him break through the ground with his own strength to essentially kill himself. Also, you can just shoot him with fireballs. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but they stand about one pixel away and throw 30 fireballs or so. It's pretty crazy. Anyways, the last little bit I did for my boss to give him that extra powerful feel is I added some minor animation effects. So I squished him into a smaller blob as he lands or as he's about to jump, and then I stretch him a bunch as he is actually jumping. And this just makes him seem powerful enough. His own jumps literally distort his body. And I feel like this can go under the few visual tricks that didn't take too much skill in the art department, because they were literally just a few pixels, and it adds that little extra flair for the user. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you were looking to get some info on the actual code that went into this, make sure you check out the next video I release. That will be used to help everyone figure out how to actually make their own boss in Construct 3, as well as a link to the game itself so you can play against the boss if you want to. Otherwise, you all have a great week. Catch you next time.